Hey, uh, so hold on, let me hit this button, Jeff Kavanaugh, for the new people. Well, come on inside and get yourself something cool to drink. And... And... Hey, wait, hold on, Botch. If you think you're the only one who can make sounds, you got one button. <laughs> you got one button. That's all you need, though, player. Hey, man, it's been a minute. Have you hit your button yet? Yeah, I hit my button. Yeah, the button's been hit. Yeah, fantastic. Hey, man, yep. it is. It is. It has been a while since we've been able to do this, brother Jeff. You have. Uh, gotten down with the with the radio folk man proud of you shots out to you i've made my own respective moves over here in the youtube space man so you know we just haven't had a time to come together like we once did to do a an exciting thrilling episode of scout cast but brother jeff boy we are back with a thrilling episode of scout cast that people have been waiting for their the whole existence bro but we are finally here sir we finally back at it and jeff has not been taking draft serious ah! I'm lying, man. Dr Jeff always take draft series. You just ain't watching 300 people, though. <laughs> you just no, Vach is lying. And next year, uh, or Vach is telling the truth. I'm sorry. Vach is not lying. Mm -hmm. And I'll be back next year. Yeah, I'm only like, I don't know, 60, 70 guys in. I'm That's not doing cool. enough. I can help everybody out there. I can help you on day one and day two, maybe. That's that's all you need, though, Jeff. That's all you need. Because what the Cowboys like to do is they get into the fourth round and they draft people that nobody's heard of. So nobody seen Nation Wright when we drafted him. Nobody seen Junior Fajoko when they drafted him. So Eric hey, Scott. you, you could Eric Scott. Nobody's got film still to this day of Eric Scott. You know what I mean? So hey, yeah. you, you know if if you haven't watched a whole gang of people, then cool. I've watched a whole gang of people, but they may draft somebody neither one of us have seen. Um, for Jeff's people, I'm I'm Vach. I don't want to promote me too much, but just V O C H L O N B A R D I on all platforms. And for my platform, y'all definitely know Jeff. Uh, he's the reason that a lot of us even here, man. Uh, J E F X uh, C A V A. It's right there. Uh, everything cool? You want to get started? You yeah, yeah, no, cool? yeah. Everything's good. I don't know what that means, but uh, like, okay. So how about this? Let's let you know, Vach, because Vach is the reason that I'm here. Because I just played around on the radio. Vach was the person who knew where the future was and was online and welcomed me into the community. So Vach is the hero. And I'm just here. Let me just uh, say why that's a lie. Because YouTube not going to get you a pool. YouTube not going to get you turf. YouTube not going to get... Well, it might. All right. So let's do this then. Jeff, uh, since, since you've been watching about 60 or so people, and look, that's plenty. Um, Who the hell you been watching? And who's your favorite? And who are we projecting for a cowboy land? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So I did what I do because my problem is that I don't do what you're supposed to do all the time because what I want to do every year is draft every wide receiver. That's all I care about is draft receivers. So I watched all the top ones first and then I started doing the Cowboys crap. So like I'm good on offensive linemen through maybe three rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've watched a smattering of corners, linebackers, a few D tackles, a few pass rushers. Uh, some running back. So I'm kind of all over the place, but I made sure I got the O-line done because I figured we're going to have to talk about it because the Cowboys aren't uh, serious people right now. And so we know what they have to pick. And so I knew we would have to talk about the offensive line. So I had to watch those guys, which is not my favorite. It's your favorite. It's not my favorite. So Jeff, let's do this. I've been I've been playing this game with a lot of different people, and I want your take on it. You don't have to have a name right here. I just kind of want a draft identity for what Jeff would do, okay? Um, and, you know, if you want to just opt out and be like, oh, I'll just take BPA right there, cool, do your thing. But the Cowboys got a first. They got 24, 56, and 87. And after 87, they don't touch picks till 174 or they something will. like that. Assuming they will, right? But let's just say that they can't. I think they will. Let's just say that they can't for for content and tough questions wise, right? Okay. Let's just say that they can't. Okay. So you got those three picks that we will consider premium picks: defensive tackle, running back, wide receiver, offensive line, linebacker. Okay. So that's five positions, and it's really six because O line is is two people. That's center and left tackle, but we could just whatever. But that's five positions: D tackle, running back, wide receiver, O line, linebacker. But you only got three premium positions. Okay, three premium picks. What do you spend those three pe those three premium picks on, and what do you wait until the fifth round for? Linebacker is the easiest wait. Um, running back should be a wait, but won't be. Um, 
I do believe well, premium. I do believe premium picks, premium position as often as you can. So the problem is, I hate your question, Vach, because the answer is their first pick because it's a premium pick should be at a premium position, which means it probably should be their starting left tackle. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm going to hate the options at 24 to pick an offensive tackle. And I'd feel way better if they picked a center. And I don't want to pick a center at 24. That's dumb. My problem, Botch, is that everything they've done has set us up to draft wrong. I agree. Uh, but if I had to go three spots, those three, I just I want to protest the question so bad because I feel like it shows exactly how they've effed this whole thing up. The answer is pick the best player you can at the most valuable positions you can with your first three picks, and they're not allowed to because they are making a mistake. Did you see the article on the ringer? Did you see the thing? I forgot who wrote it. Uh, oh, I don't read that, but go ahead. Oh, it was like the six uh, rules that GMs should don't F it up, and one of them was stop thinking everything is like plug and play. Like, oh, it's a first-round pick. He's going to plug and play. It's a second-round pick. He's going to plug and play. That is arrogant as hell. Now, because you suck at a spot, you might plug and play a guy, but what if he sucks? The idea that they're going to hit the first three is dumb. Yeah, They're not. Now, a running back in the first three rounds, sure, he'll play and he'll be fine because who cares? He's a running back. Um, but the easy answer to that question, I guess, would be left tackle, center, or maybe left tackle... Double Shit. down on O line, double down on O line, left tackle, wide receiver, center. That was you want. If I go, if I go third round center, do you are you confident he's better than Brock Hoffman? I'm not. I might go left tackle, D tackle, but you might have to help me to find a second round D tackle. That's the problem with this whole thing, Jeff. That's the problem. Yeah, the problem with, this with whole the whole thing is they set this crap up too. Yeah, they did this. Yep. So, so let me, let me just, let me just run. Let me just ask you this though. Right. And and then I'm going to get into this deep thought. You said uh, drafting a center at 24 overall is dumb. I understand the whole value argument. Right. But what if this center is Travis Frederick, right? Is that a dumb decision? So, like, so does the center matter or is it just center in general for you? No, he matters. I just think, you know, like watching, uh, you're an offensive lineman who I admire and trust. So, Every time an offensive lineman isn't athletic enough or his arms are too short, what happens? If they're not nuanced enough to deal with long arm defenders, then they get got by long arm defenders for sure. And so you just move them and you say, oh, that guy, he's not going to play offensive tackle in the NFL. He'll be a guard. And I can't do the same thing with a guard where it's like, oh, he's his arm is too short at guard. He'll be a center. Like they think they can kind of figure that out. And so, you know, a top paid center makes $12 million. A top made tackle, paid tackle makes 25 or 30 or whatever. It's like, so there are levels to what we're trying to achieve with our best picks. We want to get the most value we can. Mm -hmm. But if you were in a disaster zone and you told me you're going to get a pro bowler, then sure. Yeah, a pro bowler is absolutely worth the 24th overall pick. Of course. I just don't I, want to, you know, run into this Connor Williams problem to where, you know, you just think that a that a guard is a bad tackle, and you think that a center is a is a bad guard, and all of a sudden you just wasting picks all of us. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but but this is my this is my whole my whole thing though, Jeff. I do think you can find a center that's better than Brock Hoffman in the third round because those guys are deep. I don't think you can find a tackle better than Awesome Richards if you get too too late. So you have to take tackle early. I don't want to move Tyler Smith. You moving Tyler Smith? Um, I feel like I have to go backwards again. The problem is me, Jesus, man. hell no. Okay. And not just hell no, but literally never, mm -hmm. ever, ever. His own coach told you, don't move him. On my show. We got to go watch. Don't move him. Yeah. You talked to Big Duke? I talked to Big Duke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so. Don't move him ever. The man training him will tell you that. Don't move him ever. You're taking away the stuff he's good at. Yep. Um, so no. But my problem is who is going to play left tackle? And I guess if you believe in a Sim Richards and we're going to try that, that's one thing. I'd be terrified. Mm -hmm. But I would also be terrified of anybody you're going to pick at 24 playing left tackle as a rookie. Anybody. Assuming it goes the way I think it's going to go. Sure. Because unless you're going to do something that the Cowboys would never do, like, you know who might be able to play left tackle as a rookie that they absolutely won't pick? 
Jordan Morgan at Arizona might be able to play left tackle in the NFL tomorrow, but teams are going to be like, yeah, his arms aren't that short, and he's not as strong as I wanted him to be. I wanted him to do some squats, and I'm like, well, he can play left tackle. I watched him do it. He's good as hell at it. Um, so, like, we're going to watch Alt go off the board, Latham go off the board, the Fs go off the board, all three of them. Fashion new, Fauci new, and Fuaga. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna watch all three of them go off the board. Amarius Mims go off the board, and he's also he's played eight college games. But I would try it. I don't give a crap. I'd put him out there. Yeah. But I'm guessing all six are gone. Mm -hmm. And then the next two that a lot of people seem to like, I would be terrified to put on an NFL field as a rookie. The BYU kid and Tyler Guyton. Yeah. I'd be terrified of both of them as a rookie. But okay. I hated the Tyler Smith pick. Maybe I'm a dumbass, but. I don't want either one of those dudes playing NFL football as a rookie. Well, see, Jeff, to your credit, though, you probably hated the Tyler Smith pick because you was like, oh, my God, we're drafting guard early. But watching Tyler Smith film, you at least saw Tyler whooping people on film. I haven't seen Tyler Guyton whoop nobody. I ain't seen Tyler Guyton whoop a soul. He chest bumps people. He chicken wings people, which is a real football term. Chicken wing is a real technical football term. And he's very tall. Him and him and Kingsley, uh, Sua Matea from BYU, they're both tall, long-legged, bend at the waist cats. And you can't be six, seven bending at the waist. That's 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 bad football school. So the problem that you run into, Jeff, and I pick these five in particular because. You don't want Mozzie just being your guy by himself. So you would have to look at D-Tackle. D-Tackle is not great late in this draft, so you might want to take D-Tackle early. Taking D-Tackle early structurally probably don't make sense unless it's Johnny Newton, Byron Murphy, one of those guys you would have to take in the first round. Running back is probably irresponsible with all these other needs to be taking running back early. But, boy, your offense could use a running back, Jeff. Your, 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 you could use Jonathan Brooks. You could use – um, Trey Benson, you could use one of those guys. Wide receiver, maybe you don't need it as bad, but you got three rounds worth of dudes better than Jalen Tobit right now, Jeff. That's just how I feel. So, but then I feel like once you get to, to the fifth round, you wasting your time trying to find somebody better than Jalen Tobit, right? Offensive line and linebacker. I love Peyton Wilson, and he's one of my favorite players in this whole draft. He's hurt guy. Jonathan Cooper's good, but man, you got so much other stuff on his paper. So. Man, I wish we would have kept Hankins. I ain't saying Hankins is some world eater, but that would have world beater, but but that would have made this easier. You know what I'm saying? Keeping, I ain't saying keep Tony or nothing like that, but keeping Tyron Smith, your all pro left tackle, that definitely would have made this conversation easy on the O line side. And just don't be negligent with linebacker throughout the year. Like you, you've given up many young D tackles. You would love to have Bo Hanna right now. You would love to have Ridgeway right now, but. Man, you just let these dudes walk to save money to not pay nobody. <laughs> you saving money to not pay a soul. What the hell are we doing? Now you got needs. This is six needs on this paper, Jeff, and we only got three premium premium picks to make it work. For I sure. think there's probably one that you haven't named, too. Corner? Unless you did and I missed it. Like, I think they have to find a corner. Like, yeah. there ain't a dude behind the three starters that you want playing NFL football ever. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, they have a lot of stuff that they need in the – Part that sucks about it is they always do some of this where they don't spend big money in free agency and blah, 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 blah. But they don't normally lose as many people as they did that the hard part is a lot of the guys that let, they let walk, I wouldn't assign them either. A lot of them. Tyron should be here. Yeah. Hankins is on the downside. He should be here because you have nothing else. Mm -hmm. And the bad part is all you had to do was the same stuff you always do when you build a team and they would still be here. They yeah. All they had to do was restructure Trayvon Diggs' contract and you have Tyron and Hankins' money and we're done. Mm -hmm. And now we can draft differently. But no, they're going to go in and they're going to pick an offensive lineman with one of their first three picks. They're going to pick a running back with one of their first three picks and the other pick will probably be a linebacker or another lineman and they're going to make the mistake of just going, look, we fixed it all. Like, oh, okay, so we're just going to assume that those three dudes can all play. Okay, that's great. Or maybe maybe they will skip center. Maybe they really believe that Hoffman could do it. But here's the problem with that. I can't give you the credit to think that you think that because I've seen your 30-visit list, mm -hmm. and you're visiting every top center. You know he can't play. Mm -hmm. And so they just, they've just they left themselves in an awful spot, and I'm not used to it with the Cowboys, where they have so many needs that they have to fill and it's going to screw up the idea of picking the best players. Like, could they even do a CD Lamb pick this year? 
if the right guy falls to 24 that plays a position that isn't one of the ones we've listed, can they pick? Could they pick Jared Verse? I don't know. Do you like him? I can like Jared Verse. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, they would, they would, they would take Jared Verse and they'll fit him in there and they'll just be like, all right, um, Tyrus Wheat, step up. Fajoko, step up. Uh, Carl Davis, step up. That's, that's what they're going to say to us, Jeff. And you know what? I actually, I hope, because I think that's better than saying we're going to pick uh, JPJ here because we have to have a center. Like if a, if a good player at a premium position is available, they better not have screwed this thing up so bad yeah. that they can't pick them. Yeah. Because that's how you screw it up. Picking Caleb on chase on over CD lamb is how they could have screwed it up. Sure. Because they needed a pass rusher. So I hope that they would be willing to pick a different position that they don't need, but I don't think they will because the needs are too big. That's where, I think, that's where I think they are, and I think it's stupid. I was talking to Duke Mannyweather, and I'm not flexing, by the way. I just think this valuable information, the interview is on my channel if y'all want to go see it. And no, when he, that's great. I also had a great time when I met Duke Mannyweather, and I was out at his facility when he was training the draft prospects, okay? He invited me. Yeah, he, whatever. Um, <laughs> but when he was talking about Zach Frazier, though, Jeff, center from West Virginia, Good player. He was like, boy, man, he's strong as hell, tough as hell. Look what he did versus the Texas kids. Is he training him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, when he was, when he was, when he was talking about Mims, boy, I'd never seen a player his size with this athleticism. Blah, 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 blah. When he was talking about, uh, you know, uh, Mason McCormick. Oh, hey, he's shot this player he is strong, sneaky, strong boy. He's gonna be a great player in the league. I was like, all right, Duke, uh, how is um Brock Hoffman going? Hey, man, he works hard. He puts one foot in front of the other. How's Steve? And what we got to do is we got to identify what he's bad at <laughs> and we have to identify what he's good at. And we got to do more of what he's good at and less of what he's bad at. I'm not putting words to Duke mouth because Duke Stoic is here. I, mean, you know, I don't think he play around with his words, but that sounds like he don't got a bunch of confidence that Brock Hoffman can start for you in the league for 17 to 20 games, 21 games, Jeff. So uh, I'm, I'm trusting Duke. I'm believing what the hell Duke say. And even Steven Jones, I don't believe anybody what nobody says because they had, they had people thinking that Michael Mayer was going to be the first round pick last year. So just, it could be a lot of noise here, but Steven went on the radio. Uh, the ops over there, Jeff, because we don't want them over there. We like to speak. Was that on 105.3 The Fan? I don't know. I don't know. I'm an adult. I, I'm an adult. We, can, we can give everybody all the credit and all the things. I'm riding with my friends, Jeff. You my guy. Uh, but he was on the radio, and he was all like, hey, man, you know, shh. hey, man, we got guys that can play tackle. Austin Richards can play tackle. Matt Walesco can play tackle. I was like, all right, what are we going to do about center? Hey, man, we're going to have to draft somebody that's better than Tyler Biotis, man. It is what it is. So if it's up to me, there is this possibility where they – don't go tackle at all, Jeff, because their guys got to step up. But it seems like they value center. And just like you said, there's centers all over D30 visit list. I heard, I heard it the exact same way that you did, where I was like, that's really interesting. We talked about Tyron's great, and then he named the other guys. And at center, he named the other guys too. But, well, or did I take it the other way? Where he named the other, because he named Hoffman too, and Bass. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is he saying that he thinks Hoffman can play better than Beatrice? Because I don't think he can. No, nah, he was just saying Hoffman works hard, just like Duke said. <laughs> okay. Well, he knew he couldn't lie about left tackle and say, we're going to find somebody who can play better than Tyron. So he knew he couldn't lie about that one, but they were telling you what they thought of Biotish. Like, he was meh, and yeah. we can do better. He uh, and, yeah, I think I really think they can. I like I like, uh, I like like Frazier a lot. I like uh, Graham Barton a lot. I like JPJ a little less than both of them, but I like him just fine. I think that those three are, sure, I could – have one of them start at center and be just fine. I, it's one of those things where I'd kind of be like, Hey, why don't you just let that play out and see if like the chiefs or bills call? Cause they want to draft an outside receiver and take their third round pick from them so that we can have more things. Cause we got a lot of crap to do. Yeah. Uh, but I would be okay if their first pick was Graham Barton or Zach Frazier. I'd rather it not be a 24. I'd rather it be at 28 or 32, but I'll take those. What if it's truly BPA though, Jeff? You you mentioned Jared Verse, and I think Jared Verse would have to get caught with some coke or something to fall. Well, I'm up. trying to come up with. You think three? This? I got you. How about this? Uh, these these names I've been saying all week. Um, Byron Murphy, tackle from Texas. Jerzon Johnny Newton, tackle from Illinois. Uh, uh, I almost called him Demarcus Lawrence, but uh, Darius Robinson, edge from Missouri. 
or like Cooper DeGene, cornerback from Iowa, would you be fine with any of those players? If they're the best player on the Cowboys board and they decide to bring them in, would you be fine with any of those guys? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If that's the best player on the board, then absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm not, I gotta, I gotta be strong here on the Cooper thing. I gotta be strong. I haven't watched his tape, but I gotta stay strong. Yeah, absolutely. We could take him. It's not weird that he's a white corner at all. That's not weird. I st- I'm all about inclusion, Jeff. I'm all about inclusion, bro. Uh, real fast, though, we want to uh, shout out uh, J Raj 72 I don't know who these people sending supers to, whether it's me or you, but we're just going to shout them out, and we'll figure it out in the back of you. But uh, J, J Raj, shout out to you, sir. Drop the two. said, let's go. That's exactly what I said. Um, De Lunatic, uh, uh, Buenos Tardes, uh, me, um, me hermano. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you. He dropped five in the El, El Supero. Uh, Chato. He dropped five. It says Cinco. He dropped five. It says everybody on one year deals and we ain't signing our stars, but Vach and Jeff. Let's go. DC 4L Piotr Pinche Cowboys. Appreciate you, sir. Uh, Piotr Pinche Cowboys means let's go Cowboys in Spanish. If you wouldn't know that because you, you ain't coach like that. Uh, lonely cat man that has a dog in his in his profile pic. Shout out to you. Dropped a dime in the super chat. Says Vach and Jeff holding it down like Falcon and Winter Soldier. Just because I'm a black man and you're a white man, Jeff. That's what that means. We, oh. It's deep. It's deep. Okay, I'm the winter soldier. It's deep, 100. Okay. Even though, even though I would have the the weaponry to to be both, but it's it's all good. Okay. And that is all the supers. Yes. So, uh, Jeff, if those are your options, there, boom. If those are your options, there, Jeff. Um, man, I'll be fine with taking the tackle early, but this is my this is my whole issue. Both those do seem to kind of be three takes to me. I don't think we have a three take problem. We got a, I don't think Mozzie's good enough problem or if Mozzie's just not good enough right now, maybe he needs a running mate, somebody to play in front of him, let Mozzie get some more reps, let Mozzie keep developing. But that's the problem we have. We, I, there's not a one take that I feel great about. And Tavondre sweats 390 pounds. And apparently he's been um, partying. He's not serious about footballs. So he's falling down draft boards, Jeff. It's just, the, whole, the Hankins one is the one that is like the least um, acceptable that the Cowboys did. Yeah. Just because I don't care who's in this draft. Like, I don't want a one technique in the first round. Mm-mm. I mean, you tell me Vita Vea is in the draft. Sure. Sure. But like, if you're telling me like Mozzie Smith, I don't care how good he is at stopping the run in college. If he can't rush the passer, I don't want to draft that early. I want to draft that somewhere else. Yeah. But to just be so butt naked at that spot right now. It's crazy. It is insane. Crazy. And, the, and all we're talking about is offensive line. And like that spot is as bad or worse. Mm-hmm. They only have three humans on the roster, and Carl Davis don't play NFL football. I remember liking his college tape, though, so that makes me sad. Yeah. Um, Mozzie Smith doesn't play good NFL football. And, oh, don't worry, though. He's going to get a lot better over the offseason while he sits at home icing his shoulder waiting to recover from surgery. They're idiots. You would really need a, a humongous growth from last year's class from Luke and Mozzie and Overshawn, who's 235 or some odd pounds now. And let me ask you a question, Jeff. I've been asking people this all week while we're up here talking about running backs and all that. Let me ask you, let me, let me ask you a question, Sean. Um, was, Deuce, was Deuce Vaughn bad or was the run scheme and the offensive line bad? I don't know. I mean, it's hard because he never got a chance. Mm-hmm. So, like, I thought he would get to play football last year. And I am a and I'm a fan of the little running back. I think it sure sometimes in pass protection that could be a problem. And sometimes as a receiver, you're not as big a target, whatever. Throw an accurate pass. And Dak does. Uh I was surprised he didn't really get a look. And I think that says a lot about what they think about him, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would have thought I think Deuce Vaughn, if I gotta talk myself into just rolling with like Rico and Deuce, um, I would have liked to have seen Deuce Vaughn get a shot to actually play football because I think the little tiny running back that is held a tackle is good. I think that's a good thing to have in your offense. You yeah. you throw him a swing pass and it's him and a linebacker. Who you betting on? I'm betting on the tiny guy. Take a deuce. Yeah. If you have somebody who runs as fast as I do is as quick or quicker than me jumps as high as I do. And he is six inches, six inches shorter than me. I have no chance to catch that dude in an open field. No yeah. chance. I like the little running back. Um, so, yeah, I do think that their run game was kind of stupid. 
Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen your interview yet. I wonder if Duke might have weighed in because I know that he thinks that their run game was kind of stupid last year. I should have asked him about it, man, but uh, I didn't want to be messy. You yeah, know yeah, they got away. He, yeah, I believe that he believes that they got away from some of the things that are good for Pollard outside zone and yeah. were just mashing the ball up in there like dummy O's. But yeah. uh, I'd like to see Deuce get a shot at things, but I also do think that they don't really have an NFL starter on their team at running back. They're, you know they're going to pick Jonathan Brooks, right? Or Trey Benson. I'll take Trey Benson. I'll or you're going to wait to the third round and see who's there. Um, I'll take Braylon Allen, Trey Benson. Shipley is cool. Um, I like Wright. You know what I'm saying? I, I like those guys, man. And look, Jonathan Brooks is fantastic, dog. It's just that the hurt dude, man. Hurt dude. I just have a I just have a certain fear for hurt guy now. Go, pour, pour, pour. First linebacker out of your mouth was Peyton Wilson. That's different. Peyton that man Wilson. has had that man has had 17 surgery. Hear me out. Hear me out. Peyton Wilson's more healthy than Jonathan Brooks right now. Peyton Wilson hadn't hadn't been hurt in two years, Jeff. The surgery worked. Whatever doctor did to work, it worked. Jonathan Brooks recovering. He's in rehab and shit. Okay. Yeah. It's just a little ACL. They happen all the time. Of course, the last couple ones for the Cowboys, the guys that came back haven't been any good at all. Those, and I, you know, if it was like two years removed or whatever, like uh, Trey Benson's ACL, Trey Benson's ACL, like like two years ago. Um, I even think Jordan Morgan had an ACL like uh, last year or something like that, year before. So, yeah, man, the, these guys go through the knee thing and they take an extra year to recover. I just have... You know, I just have my you know reservations for the hurt guy, but Jonathan you, Brooks fantastic. Do you have at twenty four overall? Do you have a guy that they could pick that you could start at left tackle? Um, out of all the dudes that could possibly be there, and I, I think Jordan Morgan is the last one. I think Jordan Jordan Morgan is the last of the offensive linemen that I trust for real, for real. If and it's just based to, on other people's rankings, he would he'll be available. He'll be available, yeah. I just don't want the Cowboys to do goofy shit like put him at guard and put Tyler at tackle. I just don't want that. That would make that me so yeah. I don't. I, yeah, that that's that's nonsense to me. Um, I don't think Mims would be there and all my other favorite guys. I don't know why Fuaga was a thirty visit. That don't make sense to me. Like he would have to sell some coke and get caught with it. That's what I want. One of the two Fs, not the Penn State one. I want one of the other two Fs so bad, and I yeah. can't have them. I know I can't have them, but I want one of them. Fountain was really good. Fountain was really good. Um, but. I'm not a I'm not a Tyler Guyton guy. I don't think he can I don't I don't think he's ready to play football right now. I think he's more of a second round pick to me. Um Kingsley Sewell Matea is more of a third round pick to me. I don't think Patrick Paul is is good at all. Um you're a Texas fan, right? Or you're an Oklahoma dude? I haven't I, I'm a fake Oklahoma fan. Um, but I haven't watched the Texas offensive lineman yet. I did, you know who is is at least interesting to me? Who's that? Is Notre Dame's right tackle. Blake Fisher can play. Yeah, but I don't see I people talking. Morning. But I don't see people talking about Blake Blake Fisher in that way. And Blake not Fisher, first round, not first round. No, 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 no. But you know, if he's in the second, third, really, he's like the third. third round, yeah. Um, but if we just talking about day two guys, the only two guys I can see at tackle that can really play to me is Blake Fisher, the right tackle from Notre Dame, and Christian Jones, the left tackle from Texas. Go watch him; you'll love him. Watch the game versus uh, versus um, um, Bama. But Matt Gun Gun Calvis from Pittsburgh, who's a thirty visit guy, he he can't play. He's a he's another Josh Ball, Matt Willesco guy. Um, a couple of these other guys are guards. Isaiah Adams probably going to be a guard. Uh, all so what you're saying is no. No, Jordan, Jordan Morgan. He's my last one. Trying to fix left tackle at 24 doesn't work because they won't. I couldn't imagine that they would even do that. Like they love their measurables. I think if you're sub 33, 34 inch arm man, they may not. And wait, Morgan, is he over 33? He's 32 and seven eighths. Okay. Yeah. So they'd probably just be like, oh, he's a guard. He's a guard. And that's what I'm worried about is that they're just going to pick somebody, slap him at guard, move Tyler Smith. And I'm just going to be like, why did you downgrade on purpose at multiple spots? Yeah. If you a new center next to a new guard, and that's what Duke Manweather said when I talked to him on an interview on my channel, he was like, "You just don't want to put two two young players next next to each other like that. You don't want to put whoever your rookie center is next to a rookie guard. So just keep Tyler in there, and Tyler can help you left tackle. Tyler Smith, he can help you left tackle, and he can help your um your center and like smush that. Whether it be Jackson Powers, Johnson, uh, Graham Barton, Zach Frazier, put that dude in between." Uh, Zach Martin and and Tyler Smith and you can go boogie but I just have a an awful feeling that everything that we think 
I think the the Cowboys aren't going to go in the direction that we think because that's just how the last couple of drafts have been. They 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 lied to us, and these thirty visits have been illusions for the for the first round picks. The 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 thirty visits is for figuring out the hurt guy. Who are these undrafted free agent dudes we like a whole bunch, and who are the like day two and three guys? I think the the first round pick they just take whoever's the best guy there. That's just my own personal opinion. Okay, let me. Just for the hell of it, I don't know your receiver rankings, but just for the hell of it, because I love receivers. Oh, let's do it, Jim. Let's talk some receivers. If you, I, I like them. If you're at 24 or even like a trade down, the tackles we want are gone. And you have to compare maybe Brian Thomas is a pipe dream, but A.D. Mitchell, Lad McConkey, Xavier Worthy, and it's those guys or the center prospects. I'm taking, I'm taking Jackson Powers Johnson and Graham Barden over all the receivers because I feel like, let me tell you why, Jeff, I feel like there's 21 receivers that can play for me right now. So in my mind, you and you just have to draft politic a little bit. In my mind, you're just going to have to wait to get receiver in the third round or something like that. For example, like I think Tez Walker from um, Carolina, right? He, he comes in better than uh, Jalen Tobit right now. Xavier Leggett, Jalen Polk, Keon Coleman, Ricky Pearsall, uh, Lam- I think all those dudes are better than Jalen Tober right now. So people think that tackle is deep. Tackle is really thick. It's just a whole bunch of tackles in one spot. Wide receiver is truly deep because it's some fourth round dudes like the kid from Arizona, Jacob Cowing, or Washington from Virginia, Malik Washington. I think all those dudes can play. And those may be fourth round guys. So I'm politicking and, and, and taking wide receiver later. I'm, I'm going center early. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Who's so you got? We, Who's so you got, we, Jeff? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <sighs> outside of the outside of the big the big three, who's your favorite next three receivers besides the big three? Uh, Brian Thomas four, Lad McConkey five, Ad Mitchell six, Xavier Worthy seven. But I haven't seen everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I okay. don't love Keon Coleman. I'm scared of the big guy. I'm scared of the big guy that doesn't get open. I'm terrified of it. It's just the King will fight you for that. Fuss King loves Keon Coleman to peace. And Fuss King says he'll take Keon Coleman at 24. And he might be right. That's one of the ones where I just avoid certain things because uh, I'm afraid and I'm just playing the odds. The non separating wide receiver scares me. And you know what? Maybe if things go great for him, he's TF and Higgins. But yeah. I don't know. I don't like, I, I get scared of the I don't separate guy. I love get open guy. Get open guy makes me so happy. A.D. Mitchell is the interesting one, especially, like, I can't be the only one who thought this, but when I was watching him, I was like, that's funny that a guy at Texas plays, moves, stands, signals, everything, Mm -hmm. exactly like C.D. Lamb did at Oklahoma. Like, he (laughs) looks like the exact same person. He didn't have the same production. Sure. I don't think he's as good after the catch. Yeah. Um... But it was just funny that he looked the same. And I was just like, yeah, it's like CD, but at the other school. And mm-hmm. that's funny to me. Uh, and he's he's the other one that I think is kind of scary because just watching him move on tape and catch the football, I'm like, why didn't he have 1,500 yards? Mm-hmm. He looks really good, but he didn't have those numbers. And then Worthy is another one that I don't know. You yeah. talk about first round, I go, I don't think so. I'd probably go second or third. Yeah, like. Don't get me wrong. Fast is a good trick. Yeah. It's a really good trick. I think he's like Deshaun Jackson. I think, that, and that's, that's a good play to have. That's yeah. That's, that's, second that's, round pick. that's worth the second so, round pick for sure. So would you, would you take either one of those guys or whoever your favorite center is Zach Frazier? Let's just say, would you pick those guys or Zach? I would take Graham Barton over those receivers. Over those receivers. I think I would take, let me see. I would take, the receivers over the other two center. Well, I would take McConkey Mitchell over the other two centers and worthy might slide in between powers, Johnson and Frazier. Sure. I think lad is better than Brian Thomas though, Joe. He might be. I mean, it, I mean, if I'm relying on the thing that I just talked about, I probably should have the balls to do that. Cause that dude gets open. Route running, he gets open. He's not the like slow possession route running white kid. Like he can run, and he's not like small. Like 
you know, it's it's easy to get caught up in a lazy, just a just a lazy evaluation with Lamb McConnell. You'll look at him, you'll think he like the other white kids, but no, 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 he ain't he ain't that white. Well, kid. I think the best comparison for the way that he plays football, and don't compare him today because today he has all of the CTE. Doug Baldwin. Oh, you you you, 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 you tell me, AB, AB, AB. I can see it. He plays like Antonio Brown. Okay, bro. Oh, shit. Uh, let's see, Jeff. We got a uh, will be friend. What's up, doc? He drive five and says, Jeff, I know you love fantasy stuff. Have you ever heard of Stormlight Archives? I think, yes, of course. Know. Calden Stormbless saves the world. Yes, of course. Yes, 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 yes. I'm I'm sorry. Would you say not Chuck? Who no, just don't worry about it. Just know that Calden Stormbless will take care of it. He's a beast. All right, cool. Uh, they, they got swords and stuff, and at different points, he kind of levels up, like if, if it was a Pokemon or a Dragon Ball Z kind of thing. And hey, a Pokemon or a, okay, now what, know what that means? Is like, is this a game? Is this a? It's a book series. I bet I got one of them. Oh, oh, oh I don't read. Though. Hey, yo, hold on, Jeff. You, hey, yo, Jeff, you. I don't read. Hey, Jeff, you good? I don't read. No, hey, hey. I just want to see if it's in this room or the other room. It's it's probably in the other room. I'm hey, you you good. You go ahead and right. Uh the lunatic dropped the deuce. Uh uh it it does. He says, uh likely trade partner, the the commodes. He's talking about watch football wizards. I think um if Brian Thomas falls and somebody likes him, or if um Brock Bowers falls and somebody likes him, maybe one of the defenders, one of the tackles or something like that. Or you know, like Jeff said, like if Jared Verse falls or something like that, I could see somebody moving up to go get that guy. So if we were to trade back. It's, it's, it's more likely somebody would trade up to our pick than for us to pick up the phone and be like, hey, can we move back? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know, man. I think that they I think they want to trade back. Yeah, of course they want and to. Maybe I, well, maybe I just think that because I think it's common sense. I don't know if common sense is common out there, but in my mind, it makes all the sense in the world to trade back if you're the Cowboys. But man, you'd yeah. still be talking about the same tackles. You'd be talking about the same centers. Like how many centers are really going to go in the first 32? Man, they, three. They're centers, Botch. They're not three centers aren't going in the first round. Jeff. Three centers aren't going in the first round. I will bet you that super chat. Three I don't centers gamble. don't go in the first round. Okay, okay. I don't gamble because I know the lunatic on my side. I, I look, I don't gamble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's on my channel a lot too. Side, I don't don't side. Oh no. Uh brother Marcus Harris and shots out to you. Good to see you, brother. He drive five says uh dangerous men are necessary. God damn right, Marcus Hart. He, I, I know he, he know that's a, that's a secret, Jeff. Uh, salute the Vosh and Jeff uh, for the scout cast. I wonder who is Andre three thousand amongst these gentlemen. Well, Jeff has somehow claimed Andre, even though I think it's fine if you you probably you're probably Andre. I think you're the face of scout cast, and I have way much more um, substance and greatness than people give me credit for because mm. I'm overshadowed by you. That's a good one, Jeff. Thank you. That's a good one. People got big boy messed up. And uh, yeah, Jeff wrestling his dog. He wrestling his things like you got. That's when I got this one. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, bet we we both. Uh, can I hit this button to make my? Mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the. You know, what I'm I got them. Got them right back. The metal things. They never stayed on my wall though. They're pieces of crap. They're pieces of shit, Jeff. But I, you know, I got a tape and. Double magnum. Yeah, else? so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a different background. And uh, what I did is I ordered this thing that's just a stand. And then mm. it pulls apart the screen. And it's going to be a screen behind me. But it's going to look like I redid the wall and like it's brick. But it's really just going to be a stretched out thing. Just a green screen. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. And Andre Drive 5 says, Keon Coleman is Laquan Treadwell. Oh, I know. I think he's a better athlete than Laquan than scarred me. Yeah, he yeah. We... Me. we Tre Trey was the reason why you don't like the big can't separate receiver. He, he, he hurt me. He hurt me a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, Dro knows dropped the deuce says, I say we go all Polynesian. Yo, Jeff, you notice how like all the island boys, right? That's what I've been calling them because they get because if they Hawaiian, they mad if you call them Tongan. If they are all three of the F's island people, Fosh News Nigerian. Uh, so that that's like that's like Africa or something. But, okay, yeah. so Reggie wants him. <laughs> okay, so uh, Reg, you know Reggie. Yeah, yeah, love Reggie. So Reggie, Reggie wants all Nigerian players. So I can see that. There's a couple of them that, that can't play, but uh, Fuaga, Fautanu, Suomatea, my man's from Utah. Uh, 
Don't worry about it. I wouldn't Sa- worry about Sa- it. Sa- Satoa Lemingle. I wouldn't worry about. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Lam- um, layer. You going and- for you're going for names? I'm not gonna know. I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's one more too though, man. I and I don't want to just leave the people hanging, man. But it's it's one more tough one. Uh, but I think he played like defense or something. Uh, Do you think if we lit incense and did chants or something that we could get either Fatanu or Fuaga to get to us? Like I would give up a toe. So Jeff, is there a world where it goes? Alt goes, Fashanu goes. Latham goes, Mims goes before those two. Mm -hmm. And then somebody takes one of them and one of them gets to us. I don't think that world exists. I want it to though, real bad. So Jeff, I say this every year. Um, I won't say who's, I won't say who's not going to be there because teams suck at drafting. Yeah. Teams, Teams, they're bad at this. Teams trash at this, Jeff. So there may be, I'll give you this, Jeff. There may be a weird dance of some teams got you at guard and some teams got you at tackle. Some people are going to look at J.C. Latham and be like, oh, he's not a tackle. He's a guard, so I'm going to pass him. See, I see the ones – so what I've been seeing from other people is Washington dude, Fatanu, uh-huh. as a guard and Fuaga as a tackle. Uh-huh. And I'm looking at him and going, if you made me move one of them to guard, I think you're moving the wrong one. But – Whatever. I think they're both tackles. I think, I think we, people yeah. are in too much of a hurry to move people. I think they're definitely both tackles. I think Fuag is the better the better guard if you had to put him at guard because he's a Molly run game ready dude right now, and he feels a little more bigger. Um, I don't know, man. Jeff, it be these goofy people that just be leaning on arm lift so much, dog. You know what I'm saying? It just and and it's, over 34, isn't he? That's why I don't know why anybody's saying guard on him. Cause I'm like, his tackle tape is great. Yeah. He doesn't look small and his arms aren't short. And so sometimes I just don't know and whatever it's other people. So what do I care? Yeah. Uh, but I see him ranked as a guard places. And I'm like, what are y'all doing? And why? If there's anybody that's a guard, it's like Morgan could be, I could see it with Morgan. Like that one, I at least get it. I can see it with Morgan, but he but don't a, have to. He got a black belt left tackle though, Jeff. That's my problem. Yeah. Like all the all yeah. the the techniques that makes your opponent's arms shorter, so you can deal yeah. with him. He know them shits. He know how to deal with the wrist, how to how to how to work the elbows, how to grab, how to fate, how to bait. You know what I'm saying? Like he knows those tricks. If you're not nuanced in those tricks, like Guyton. Well, Tyler he doesn't, Gaiden, short, but he Tyler, doesn't have short arms. But. Tyler, yeah, but he he don't know how to use Patrick. Have you seen Have you seen Patrick Paul from Texas? He's the only one I haven't watched. But to what you're saying, like Guyton and BYU dude are the two dudes that when I watched them, because when I watch guys, you have to start somewhere, right? And so where I start is with people's rankings and shit. I'm like, all right, let's see. Okay, here's a list of tackles. Here I go. And so I'm watching the first ones, and then I went from Mims, who I was like, holy crap, I love this dude. Um, and then the next one was Guyton. And I went, this dude can't stay in front of anyone. Yeah. And like every like I'm told he's a super athletic, mm-hmm. super long, and all these things. I'm like, well, then how come he can't stay in front of anybody? And he looks super slow and he can't knee bend right. And I'm told he's an incredible athlete, which is why I know he's gonna be the Cowboys pick and he's gonna be good. Mm-hmm. Cause he's the one dude that is just jumping out at me like, don't do that. Oh. That's how I know he's gonna be the pick and he'll be good because life loves to make me look stupid. Yeah, but um, he yeah, he's on tape. I'm just like he can't stay in front of anybody. He's a but he's a fantastic athlete though. He he has a his his first step firing off the football. Yeah, but then he runs. Then you pull him, and it, you're like, man, look at this incredible athlete run. And then the dude starts to run inside, and he <laughs> runs clean by him. And I'm, where are you going? <laughs> so I'm like, can you not change direction, or is your awareness bad? He pulls and blocks the left tackle, Jeff. That's what he does, and he just he missed everybody. And the more tough the the competition get the more fun. Texas made him look sorry, sorry. Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma State and them they they made him look sorry. Jeff, you got to find yeah. like the little bitty tape. Like you got to find Texas Tech for him to have a solid game. But you can still see through it. And so this whole listen, dog. And I don't want to shit on nobody that you know these kids that they dream and all that. But at twenty four, Tyler Guyton and Kingsley Sue Mateo, I'm just not banking on upside with them. 
they're going to make lots of money and I hope that they both are great players. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, yeah, so I'm going through, you know, these things. And then, so I watch Guyton and then I watch, I think Kingsley. And then I get down to Jordan Morgan and I'm like, how come I'm watching this dude after I watch those dudes? Yeah. Like yeah. this dude, you can't get around this no. dude. You've his never, you have never run a stunt that he wasn't giggling. Like really? Like he knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. on every snap and i'm like how come we're talking about it? and then you remember because in the draft people are looking for traits not necessarily just tape and so it's like well what could guyton be and what could kingsley be and i'm like i get it but i'm i need a left tackle tomorrow mm -hmm. i'll take the one that's good at left tackle yeah yeah give me the black belt give me some, and that's why i like christian john and look you don't have to dive too too deep to the offense tackles because the damn draft tomorrow <laughs> you I'll, know what i'm saying i'll watch the texas guy christian john uh christian johns from right tackle he's a um senior bowl guy and i think he would tell you but pff has him as like a 150 and i don't like it give me some linebackers like let's say because i think that they're i think there's absolutely a world where they take a linebacker in the second round okay like what order do you have? I know who's first because I already heard you say it. Uh, Cooper, Cooper. Wilson for you, or maybe Cooper. You hadn't mentioned Cooper yet, but maybe Cooper. Um, hey, hey, Colton, Wilson, Cooper, Wilson. Wilson. And is there anybody else that belongs in that conversation? I think I think Junior Coles is a little strange, man. I think he gets lost a lot. You know what I'm saying? I think he gets I think he gets misdirected, and and he just end up tackling the wrong people for no reason. But I think that's Cooper. <laughs> you think you think? Okay, so look, so look. Here's the difference, right? I think Edger and Cooper has a good feel for it, but he just overruns people because he's too aggressive. He does do that, yeah, for sure. Junior Colson on a regular I formation, <laughs> he running over that. <laughs> like that's 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 his thing. That's his he just he just doesn't see it to me. He just doesn't see okay, it. Okay, because I see him as a guy that is almost never wrong, will never miss a tackle. See, Peyton Over Wilson's never defense. wrong. Peyton Wilson's never wrong. Okay. With Colson, my thing is that okay. it's very much off the ball linebacker. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you want him to make a bunch of plays in coverage or make a bunch of plays sacking the quarterback, and so my only thing about him is how high am I going to draft a, a guy that is literally meh in coverage sure. and a running back tackler? Mm -hmm. I like him a lot. Yeah. And then Cooper, I'm like, I don't know, because most of the best stuff that you do at your size, you're not going to do all that much. Somebody's probably just going to play you at linebacker. Mm -hmm. And now the fact that you overrun stuff in the open field, and, all that, and I don't know, right? Because he makes tons of plays in the backfield. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. He slips through. He rushes the quarterback. He does all these things. And I'm like, but you're 230 pounds. You're not going to line up and rush the quarterback a ton. I don't know. So I don't know. I struggle with the linebackers. Yeah. I think Olsen fits in really well if you want somebody to call the defense and take the job from Eric Kendrick soon or repl replace Damone Clark and Cooper. I get it. Cause you can see him doing other stuff. Yeah. Um, shouts out to my guy Fuss. He says Colson is the best linebacker in the draft. It's false. No way. Not this time. We created it. Not this time. Fuss, you need to chill out with all that nonsense. <laughs> uh, J Raj, uh, 72 drive five says, Vash and Jeff both, uh, both give a preferred three round mock as in, who would you want to draft, not who you think the Cowboys would draft? Um, appreciate J Rod. I mean, if I can get, I'm a maniac, Jeff. So I feel like once you once you deal with like offensive line, you'd never have to deal with it for a long, 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 long time. So if it's up to me, I'm taking Jordan Morgan at left tackle. I'm gonna find a way to get Jackson Powers Johnson because people scared of his injuries. I'm gonna get him in the second round somehow. And uh I'm going to get the hurt linebacker Peyton Wilson. I'll figure all the rest of it out later, but that's just me. I don't know because my problem with doing the mock drafts for this team is that I hate it whatever I do, because I feel like I'm drafting for need whatever I do. Like sure. uh Graham Barton in the first. Sure. Um can I get the Notre Dame right tackle in the third? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Fisher in the third. So that gives me a couple of offensive linemen. And in the second round, you can have some fun with Malachi Corley. That motherfucker's so good, man. Malachi's so fun. And look, people... Fake, fake Debo? 
look, people going to make, look, he's, he's going to fall down boards because he don't run routes and shit. And yeah, he don't really people. do all the, and he don't really do all the, all the wide receiver stuff, but I don't care about none of that. Just get him the football. Let him not get tackled by regular people. Appreciate you, J rod. Something like that could be fun. I need to get more receiver names in my bank to try to figure it out. What I don't love is I just like, I don't, I hate that in the second round, I don't have a tackle. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. Okay. So let me do this then. You asked me about linebackers, right? Um, I think Jeremiah Trotter Jr. was uh, carried by his name just a little bit. I don't, I don't think he's as athletic or long as a. Uh, All the juniors a, lately have been pretty good. That's not true. The juniors that have made it have been pretty good. There's been other juniors out there that haven't made it. That's fair. Um, Notre Dame got a linebacker, Maurice Lefe. I like him a bunch. I just think Notre Dame asked him to do too much shit. Uh, they asking him to be uh, free safety, strong safety, linebacker, pass rush, all that kind of little nonsense. I think if you just leave him at linebacker, give him one job, he'll be fine. Tommy Eichenberg, now he sees it all, but he's not athletic enough to get there. Tommy Eichenberg, he's still in college? Ohio State, yeah, 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 yeah. He's he'll be uh coming out this year. Cedric oh, Gray, yeah, yeah. I remember watching him last year, and then I guess he was like, I'm not coming out. He just yeah. kept he just kept going back to school. Um, Cedric Gray, kind of. He's a dude that you know we kind of got he he we kind of got him already. I like Is that the North Carolina guy. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Um, Darius Missiao from UCLA. I like him a bunch because he's a he he gravitates to the football. I don't know why he's so far down the list, but you but you've probably seen people talk about Trevin Wallace from uh, Kentucky. I watched and, him because I watched the guys on the Cowboys thirty visit list, and I think that everybody likes him more than I do. I agree. I don't think Trevin. Some people got him as a second round pick. I um, pick him in the fifth. I think if he if he doesn't get blocked, I think he's fine. But he gets blocked, he gets moved around. You know, he's he's probably gonna have to play will linebacker for you. All your other linebackers are will linebackers, and he's like a junior Colson that gets blocked all the time. Mm, so like, I get it; he's a good linebacker. But man, if he if an offensive lineman comes off the ball and does not block a defensive lineman and comes to the second level, he's gonna take Trevin Wallace wherever he wants to go. I actually like the McGee guy better than him. The guy on their thirty visit list from. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's a temple, small temple, temple, temple. temple. Yeah, I actually liked him better. Mm -hmm. To your point about tackle, though, Jeff. Um, I asked you earlier if you would take Byron Murphy, Jerzon Newton. Have you? Oh yes. Um, have you seen Jerzon Newton, Illinois? No, I've seen Murphy. I need to watch Newton, and I know I need to watch Newton because I know he's a first round pick. Newton is in the conversation, so I think me. But I would take Murphy over any center for sure. Murphy's a bad dude. Are you you uh playing him at one tick or at three? Three. Which, whatever. I mean, I'm picking the best player, and it works itself out. Like, sure. for most teams, that's the way you're supposed to do it. The Cowboys are just in such a weird spot of having so many gigantic needs. They don't know if they can. But, yeah, I'm going to pick the best player, and it's going to be fine. I mean, how often did the Cowboys run out Tank, Micah, Dorrance, Fowler? Like, yeah. you're going to get to play plenty. I'm not worried that you play the same spot as though, so we're going to be fine. Plus, he's a year. He's out of here in a year. Are you a Braden Fisk guy? I like him because most of the time that I saw him, he didn't wear gloves. Mm. And I think if you don't wear gloves, there's, you're kind of a psycho. And I think that's great. Uh, where did I put him? I liked Braden Fisk. I feel like I had him in the two, three, like a two, three. Yeah. So not as a first round pick, but in the second, maybe. And if he was in the third, absolutely. The problem is, though, Jeff, is I do think that we have three takes that can play. I don't think we have any one takes besides Mozzie at all. And only one takes here are Tavondre Sweat that's irresponsible and 390 pounds. And, yeah, didn't uh, he just get in trouble for something? What did he do? Um, Crashed the car like all the rest of them doing some shit like that. Um, oh, he crashed. Oh, no, he got a DWI the week before the draft. Yeah, that's some nonsense. Um, Have you seen, you probably haven't, but Ruke Oro Oro from Clemson. I saw a little bit of him. I watched tape of him, but before I started watching... I fake watched a little bit and I watched him and I was like, huh, eh, okay. And yeah. then you watched him. Then I hadn't watched him. Okay. Well, if you if you watch uh, his highlights, he's a damn first round pick, but I don't think he's all that good. Oh so okay. hey man, slim pick is for one text, dog. I I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do, bro. I don't good know news is we have Mozzie Smith. Mozzie's gonna have to step up. Mozzie's gonna, gonna have to tell Chauncey Golston to put on 50 pounds. Or we're gonna have to sign somebody just like but it's like free agency. Like, are there even bodies out there? out there? Is there any one tech still out there? Because, you know, there's always random dudes that you forgot they exist that signed yeah. before training camp. Some, uh, dude, some dude you never heard of, like Ed Ed Jackson. You never uh, heard of him, but he's like number one on like PFF's run grade list or something. Like, there's always dudes like that that's just out there. But 
uh, free agents tracker. Let me see if any of these still work. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me positions. Give me defensive yeah. tackles. Okay. No, yeah. yeah. Um, those guys have all been signed. Those guys have all been signed. Available players. Here we go. Fletcher Cox. <laughs> He's retired. Brian Moan. Never heard of him. Raquel Nunez Roaches. I remember watching him. That's my class, uh, man. I went to school with him. What? My, uh, 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 Nunez Roaches. I went to school with him in um, Southern Miss. That's my classmate. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was out there. He um, he got him. <laughs> that, that, that funny looking boy. He got him, boy. He has a cold blood. But go ahead, though. Hassan Ridgeway, Lawrence Guy, Al Woods, Linval Joseph. Is he still any? He's 35 effing years old. I Most of the names on here, I do not know their names, and the other ones probably aren't any good. So um, I don't know what we're going to do. But what a smart team would do would be pick the best players they can find and then trade things that they need to trade. And here's the other thing the Cowboys could still do is you could trade next year's picks. Yeah. But do they want to? Because they do not appear to be serious about 2024, so they probably won't. But if you wanted to, then you would trade a fourth, fifth, sixth round pick for somebody's player that's on the last year of a deal or that's a crappy team that doesn't want them anymore. You could do that because the Cowboys have all the picks next year. They got four extras coming. Uh, yeah, like four, four day three picks or something like that. Just, I just, I'm just. Why we can't be like the other teams that make small moves and end up with like extra first round picks every year? Like, why we can't be, or even second or third round picks? I'll take second, third round. Why we can't be those guys, man? Because the unfortunate people watching us right now and us yeah. were unfortunate enough to pick this particular team. And this particular team isn't running real well sometimes. Well, there's an Eagles fan in here that loves the Cowboys. Shouts out to Alex. Uh, chat, if y'all have any Q&A for the last couple minutes with me and Jeff, we'll gladly answer some of your uh, questions there. But we do have a super chat from Jake Downing. He dropped five. He says, uh, if we get a left side player, i.e. Fats, more, uh, Fats is um, Fautanu. We call him. We call okay. him Troy Fats. Troy Fats. So, uh, Fats Morgan Barton. Uh, do the Cowboys have a competition between Tyler for left tackle and left guard? Then roll out the best five. I do think that's what sucks. What sucks is you're naming like the first guy. No, he plays tackle. Morgan, I would hope he plays tackle. Sure. Barton, I hadn't really considered him actually playing tackle in the NFL. Um, I don't want to move Tyler Smith. The problem is when they're picking at 24, there will be guys available that they think they can pick and they can start at guard. Sure. There's not going to be guys that you can pick that you think can start a tackle. So they'll be tempted and they might want to or have to. Sure. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it here. Tough, man. Tough sledding. Tough sledding. Come back, Tyron. Come back, buddy. <sighs> Boy, 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 boy. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Chat. I uh I asked y'all if y'all had any questions, and me and Jeff answer about you know two or three of them for the last five minutes. Uh, Jordan Lowe's drive five says, please don't let us pick apart Peyton Wilson. Peyton Wilson. Oh, is that the linebacker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the pick him apart. He was really fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. He's a fun yeah, he's super fun to watch. He's weird. Hey. He's tall as crap. Jeff just think he's, he's real. He's built like a T Rex, which is funny. He's six four, and his arms are like this long. But he makes it work, and he's super athletic. He's fun. Jeff just think he trash. Uh, right. th thoughts right. on Dallas not contacting Derrick Henry at all? No. He wanted to come here. Yeah, he wanted to be here. Uh, the uh, owner of his old team thought he was going to come here, but I guess she didn't know that they weren't going to call. There's a lot of stuff about uh, the Joneses and them selling the team. I mean, you know, I mean, Good luck with that. Uh, Javon Foster. Pick team. Just pick a different team. No, you don't have to cheer for the Cowboys. You don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah nah, nah. But I know that everybody's stuck. And you know what? Salute to all of you. It takes a lot of courage yeah. to stick around with this team. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes a lot. Uh, what well, do you think? More courage with some other teams because winning 12 games every year isn't terrible. It just sucks the way it ends every time. What do you think about the legacy prospects like Brendan Rice and Frank Gore Jr.? Uh, Frank, probably, Frank probably won't get drafted. Uh, Brendan is a day two guy, maybe like a third round pick. I like he does everything at a thousand percent, Jeff. Like he literally uh, looks like he's screaming when he's running his route. So what? I promise, if you watch me, look like he's screaming. Oh, his dad looks like he was not even breathing hard when he was out there being perfect. Hey man, pedigree. Um, I don't think I don't think Jeremiah Trotter is gonna be like his dad. I don't think uh, Marvin might be better than his dad. 
Um, uh, I don't, I, all I want to say, uh, is I have a lot of respect for the Harrison family. And I think that, um, everything that any of them do is very commendable. Man, you could be honest here, Jeff. We safe. I'm telling you, we safe. You, I see you're holding a weapon when you bring up the Harrison family, because you know, that's not necessarily true. I think that they're great. I just think everything, I think Marvin had a great career and I'm sure he does a lot of charitable work and that Marvin Harrison jr. Is an incredible prospect that comes from a good family. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you, brother. Um, there's another legacy player too. There's another one. Um, Chris Jenkins, his son oh, is here. Is he any good? The D tackle? I haven't watched him yet. This is the problem. He's a great athlete, play, he, but he plays for Michigan, so he does the Michigan thing. <laughs> he's laid off the football just like. Us. <laughs> but he's a good player, though. Uh, there's another legacy player that I I'm, I'm missing. There's a lot of them too. Um, Christian McCaffrey brothers in his draft, but yeah, 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 playing receiver all of a sudden instead of quarterback. Let's just pick him and see yeah, what yeah. happens. Yeah, but uh, there's a lot of bloodlines in this draft. Somebody yeah. said I'm annoying. <laughs> what? Jeez. Somebody said I'm annoying. Jeff oh. would need to be in the Iron Man suit to speak honestly about the Harrisons. No, I just I think it's a I just think it's a good 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 family. Good uh, Dro knows dropped a, a deuce and says Brandon Rice runs routes like he's in an anime fight. <laughs> Okay, I got to watch him tonight. <laughs> uh, you guys have more confidence in a rookie center or someone on the roster? Uh, I don't. I don't think Brock Hoffman can play for center for you right now. I've seen. I, I mean, I've seen three centers, and I believe in all of them more than I believe in Brock Hoffman. Yep, there's I'm sure there's center. more. Uh, last one. Who who got the last one? Before I get Jeff up out here, so he go, yo Jeff Grimaldi's Grimaldi's is crazy. Oh, the pizza! You just finally had it. Man, dog. I mean, I, I've had it, but I ain't, I ain't talked to you since I had it. Oh, okay. Boy. Yeah, Grimaldi's is great. Boy, Jeff, I got it from you, man. You you put me up on Grimaldi. Yeah, next time we're going to go to Louis too. Louis is great. Uh, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Somebody says, I, I am annoying. I don't... Okay, so okay, so Ryan said, you're annoying. But then Peter doubled down and said that uh, I am indeed. I think Pete thinks everything's annoying, so you just got to, you just can't worry about it. Pete, Pete is very is very consistent with that. Hey, uh, y'all don't. What are you trying to do? Yeah, no. <laughs> Hi right, then, cool. Hey, man, appreciate y'all. We love you to pieces. We gonna go ahead and get up out of here, man. Uh, me and Jeff will do this again once the Cowboys draft somebody and they settle down and they buy their house. Maybe we'll do it one more time before the draft. Jeff's trying to make sure he's putting out content. Damn it. There we go. Jeff Jeff is trying to get back in the game. We're going to do that for him, all right? Uh, Y'all follow me at... Come on now. Hide. Hide. There we go. Y'all follow me at Vice Lombardi, V-O-C-H-L-O-M-B-A-R-D-I. Y'all follow Jeff at Jeff Cavanaugh, G-A. There it is right there. All right. Um, do you have a read that you got to get some money for, Jeff? No, yeah. no, no. It's too late. It has to be in the first five minutes of a show, so no, I'm not going to do it. Mm -mm. You know, no. you can always take this and do it unlisted on your channel and oh. edit and re-upload it. That's I wouldn't worry about it. It's too much work for you. I wouldn't I, worry about it. No, once I dive back in for the full time, you better believe I won't miss a read. We'll but do right it now. Time. We're just trying to make sure the momentum is going in the right direction so we can make that move if we want to. Jeff is trying to buy two pools. All right. Till next time, man. Y'all hold it down for the Dosky Walsh and the Peace Kiwiski and you never know what somebody's going through. So don't be a dick. Be nice. Give them a hug. All right. Peace, man.